Well, um, just kind of started off on this day in the spring at Topeka High, and there were a lot of things that had kind of been bubbling up. Um, we had uh, candidates who would have been outstanding student government officers. Um, they, their names hadn't even made the ballot. We had individuals who should have been homecoming king or homecoming queen, but they couldn't be added to the group to be voted on um, because they could only have one black girl, one black boy. Okay. Kind of an unspoken rule? That, you just uh, have one? That it was the practice. Uh -huh. And I don't know if it was a policy, but it was the practice that, um, you know, just make sure there is someone who represents the African American, the Hispanic, and then all the rest of the candidates were white. You know, and that's okay, but if you have um, students who the the majority of the student body are saying, they're my friend, we want to nominate them. Well, we can't include them because we already have our one. So uh, uh -huh. so one morning, I arrived at school, saw all these kids out on the lawn, a lot of my friends. I went over and I believe it was Larry Kelly and Lance Murphy were talking to the students and they said, don't go in the school, we're gonna boycott, we're not gonna go in the building today. And so I um, somehow managed to call my mother, I must've gone inside and called her, but I said, can I participate? She said, sure. So, um, mm -hmm. so we walked, marched down to uh, the Board of Education building, which at that time was at 8th in Kansas. We demanded to see the superintendent. He kind of held us off for a few hours, but eventually some of our parents started showing up. And then we went up and were able to talk with them where the representatives were. And they would not um, address our demands immediately. So we ended up staying out of school. Uh, Lane Chapel was a few blocks over. It was at 14th and, okay, 15th, I think, maybe in, uh, Van Buren maybe. And so they, uh, some of the teachers came and some of the retired teachers came, tried to keep us learning, but yet inserted in that were opportunities just to talk about things that were concerning to us, um, civil rights issues. It was probably the best education <laughs> that I got that year because you had community people who really wanted to address what we wanted to know. And so, um, we stayed out, mm, it seemed like maybe about 10 days or so. 10 days? Uh -huh. Yeah, wow. it, was, it was quite a bit of time. And then the superintendent finally said, okay, we'll change policy. And so that's when we returned to school. Mm -hmm. At the same time though, Highland Park, um, their students were going through some similar issues, same district, um, but they were going to have a black, or they were gonna have, maybe it was a Black History Month or some type of a talent show. And um, they, canceled it, the school administration canceled it at the very last minute. And the students were angry, couldn't understand why. They uh, rioted in the school, um, started a fire in the auditorium, the curtains caught on fire. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all this was going on, but at the same time in Lawrence, there were um, even worse, I think, uh, situations for those students. And they had marched out, but there'd been damage to the building. Uh, one of their former students, Tiger Dowdell, he'd been shot after an incident on the KU campus. And so it was uh, just a season of real unrest, um, maybe mm -hmm. at different levels, but all rooting from the same cause of students just wanting adults to listen to them mm -hmm. and give them some valid answers as to why things were not equitable. <laughs> well, I think they had it to some degree and then that degree never shifted. Mm -hmm. So even after the in lower schools had become integrated and these young people had opportunity for years to make these friendships, by the time they got to high school, it didn't matter for a lot of them if you were black, Mexican, whatever, we all grew up over in Tennessee town, so, you know, we're all friends. We show up here, you're my best friend. I'm gonna vote for you for, you know, homecoming king or queen candidate. So let's say three blacks get nominated. Well, it's a popular vote, but if two of them get eliminated from the ballot, just because we have our one quota representative, then the kids were aware, yeah. And they said, this isn't fair, mm -hmm. but I think it was hard for, harder for the adults mm -hmm. to shift in their practice. Well, right away uh, there was a um, 
an election for uh, student government for the upcoming year. And so they ended up with an African-American um, student body president, Anthony Jones. Mm -hmm. And then they had um, more representatives uh, of color on student government for that next year coming up. Mm -hmm. So you could see some changes. I think um, there were changes in the cheerleading squad. There were more representatives of color. Uh, I think I've always had um, you know, a recognition of um, people when they're not being treated appropriately to uh, try to help resolve that. And maybe not always in a militant way, but at least to be part of whatever resolution might occur. Now, sometime I've happened upon it, you know, some things I hadn't gone out saying, okay, I'm gonna do this because this is what I see. But um, it, it has seemed to be my life's path um, in that, uh, I well, uh, I went on a church camp, a church trip uh, with the youth group, and I was one or two black people who went on that. So it was with Central Congregational. They used to have these trips they would take. Went to New York, happened to be at Tent City, mm -hmm. happened to be able to make some play cards. You know, happened to see Jesse Jackson, uh, happened to meet um, you know some other civil rights leaders. Um, at different times in my life, when I was in college and when I was working over here at the funeral home in Tennessee Town. So, you know, it was always, I, I used to say I feel like Forrest Gump because I'd find myself <laughs> in some historical place with these historical people and never even know why, you know. Mm -hmm. I got to introduce Ruby Bridges um, with a 15 minute head, heads up notice, you know, and on and on and on. But again, I think it's just my life's path. So I, I don't resist it, but I don't go seeking for opportunities mm -hmm. to get involved. But then too, I think it is this compassionate heart that um, says it's not fair and mm -hmm. no one should be made to feel like they're uh, second rate, right. especially a child. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially.